Welcome to my backyard. We're gonna have some serious fun here today. We're in Southeast Michigan. And uh, uh, this is where, you know, Michigan is supposed to be the winter water wonderland. Well, it is, and winter is coming. Uh, we're gonna have some fun. We're here at the 65 yard uh, shooting range that's in the backyard. I have three more. There's a 15 yard and a, and a, a 35 yard and a 85 yard. But right now we're at the 65 yard. And our goal here today is to make air gun shooting more popular than it's ever been. Get you to get your air gun out of the closet, dust it off and start practicing again because it can be fun. And I've shot competitively, so I'll pass some of those secrets on to you helping you to shoot yours a whole lot better and enjoy it more. Um, I have a friend that's gonna help me here today named Hollowhead, we'll find him in a minute. And uh, we're gonna be shooting one of the big bore rifles, uh, the one on my shoulder here. But let me first just explain some targets that we're looking at. Uh, first of all, on each side, we have a, a salt lick but you'll recall salt licks are white this one's brown and we put brown ones out they're really called mineral licks and they help the animals get bigger and better bones and the deer to get bigger antlers if you will so that's why we have mineral licks here but let's take a look at some of the other targets you'll see we've got four frying pans over here and when we shoot them they're going to make a real good dong from 65 yards away i think you'll like them We've also got a farmer's bell hanging on the left side of the tree. And uh, we've got two orange coyote targets as well. They all make noise when we shoot them. Uh, we actually have two real coyotes here and a family of fox that we've been watching as well. Down here on the ground is an old cement gargoyle I got at a flea market. <clears throat> and uh, it's already been shot up there around the belly a little bit, made out of cement. Uh, he used to put gargoyles around castles, you know, and keep the peasants scared and away from the, those folks. Uh, we don't use them anymore. Over here, we've got a, a wooden bear. And right down in this slot here, uh, we have a board that'll have three or four targets on it. This is a target that I made myself. And when pellets hit it, it doesn't make much noise. It's so solid. But when they come through this hole, and that's why I call it shoot the heart target it hits these blades and makes a lot of noise and so we know that from 65 yards away we shot it correct these are pieces of pipe and when they get hit they make different sounds you're probably familiar with spinning targets and uh, they let you know when we shot them too over here on a, a coroplast board and I'll explain that to you a little later we have some uh, Birchwood Casey targets, and I think you all know why they're popular. They make a nice big green splat that can be seen from 100 yards away when we uh, shoot those targets. And then we have another, well, well look at this. Hollowhead, I've told Hollowhead he should not be eating or licking that mineral lick. It's just gonna make him sick. But uh, he likes it anyway. You're probably waiting to see what gun we're gonna shoot in this episode. I believe this one came out as the number one uh, PCP big bore air gun in 19, or rather 2019. Uh, it was uh, sold more than any other big bore gun. It's made by Benjamin and it's called the Bulldog 357 Magnum. Now it shoots a, uh, a a bullet or a pellet, you have your pick. Uh, we'll be shooting, well, we'll probably shoot both, but it shoots a real bullet that comes out of a powder gun, uh, but it goes in here, no powder, no casing, no primer, and air pushes it down. And uh, it travels at about 910 feet a second. Uh, we've got a nice uh, six by 24 scope on it, different color crosshairs, uh, scope caps, uh, double screws to hold it in, and uh, a, a bipod at the end. Come on, Hollowhead, where are you going now, Hollowhead? I told you, well, Hollowhead wants to come down here for some reason. Something's got his attention. Well, 
Well, I can see what it is now. Hollow hit. You set one of the traps. And you got a live raccoon in there with you. Oh, I think he's uh, I think he's too big for hollowhead to eat. So we're going to get into some um, constructive critter control uh, in the third or fourth video. We'll also get into some hostage taking, where we'll be shooting uh, a bad guy who's holding a good person, and only half of the bad guy is showing, and. Uh, That'll make some target practice many of you have never tried before, but powerful air guns can do just that. They can save a hostage or two. Well, let's work our way up to that shooting platform. Well, welcome to our home. Here's a few targets that we'll be using this week. Uh, one is bowling pins. We're not going to be playing a game of bowling balls with pellets or bullets, what we're going to be doing though is something that we call uh, practical shooting. The bowling pin actually has the shape of a human's uh, organs that you want to go for in a, in a gun contest. And so if you can knock that bowling pin down and it's only able to do that when you hit the center of the top or the bottom, then it's a point in your favor. I see that Hollowhead is here today, but he's looks like he had a rough night last night. These are various balls that we're going to be throwing into the water down below and shooting them. Now I found these very expensive French porcelain chefs uh, and we're going to shoot them too. Actually they're not expensive French chefs. Uh, I got them at a flea market for just a dollar and they're made of plastic and uh, I put a, a bottle of uh, baby powder in each one and so I think when he gets hit he just might be a pretty explosion. Uh, we've got a variety of uh, uh, rifle rest. Having your rifle steady is very very important. We'll also do a video on uh, critter control and oh, we've got a number of critters around here that need to be controlled. These crows are one. We've got raccoons, woodchucks, um, squirrels get into the attic. We've got our fair share. Uh, we've got quite a few rifles to uh, to be doing these uh, video presentations on. I think you'll like them. Uh, and we've got an awful lot of different ammo to use. The one that uh, we're going to be doing today is this uh, Benjamin 357 Magnum complete with a uh, a scope that goes up to 24 power, has a 4 inch shade control on it, and it has the uh, adjustable objective lens as well, and a bipod. We'll go through the different air guns, and then we'll come over here to the edge of our shooting stand, our shooting platform, and this is where we'll do our shooting for the most part. Well, let's find out if we can hit a French chef full of baby baking powder. Well, it's nice to see that the sun is coming out. That's great. Um, besides finding unusual targets at flea markets, garage sales and things, uh, like the, uh, the French uh, chef, etc., my favorite target is these coroplast signs. Uh, coroplast is the material they, it's like cor corrugated plastic. They make boxes out of it. Also make a lot of signs out of it. And uh, I like these, I like to paint them black. You can find a whole lot after each election. The guys who don't win just leave them out there. But uh, I like to paint it completely, completely black and then They look something like this, and I'll show you what I do with them next. I like these uh, Birchwood Casey targets, or any target, that shows a nice splat when you hit. And uh, you can put it on these Coroplast signs and rub it on. Um, now there's a problem with them, and that's this. 
at ranges of 30, 50, 75, 100 yards, sometimes you look through your scope or spotting scope and these marks look like uh, pellet holes. And you don't know if that was your pellet or just what. So I like to mark them up. I even like to take the name off so that I'm looking at a nice plain target. And any yellow that appears on it is my yellow. And of course, you can reuse these time and time again by putting these dots over your hole. You're going to find that on the back side, it'll just show pops coming through and you can use them over and over again. The first step in getting an air rifle or powder rifle sighted in is to get a nice good group. If we have a good group, it speaks highly of the rifle, it speaks highly of the barrel in the rifle, and it speaks highly of you. So we want to make sure all those things are in place. And once we have that grouping, then it's very easy to get into the scope and move the crosshairs onto the proper spot so that it shoots bullseyes after that. Uh, if you have iron sights, you can move those. If you have a red dot, you can move that. So let's see how well this rifle is sighted in at this time. I'll be shooting at the upper right target. There's a nice tight group. Well, I'm going to give you a, uh, a tip for competitive shooting that will make you and your rifle a little more accurate. Uh, if your scope has an AOL on the front, it now needs to be changed. I'm shooting at about 40 yards. But here's the tip. The best shot would be to take a pencil and stick it in the trigger guard and pull it straight back because that would allow the gun to stay straight. What we frequently do when we pull the trigger is we pull the gun to the right. It's really bad with pistols and it even gets bad on rifles. So you've got to retrain this trigger finger to go in and act like a pencil. Now we'll see if I can hit that ball down there. Well, let's wrap up this uh, uh, Benjamin Bulldog 357 Magnum. It's a, uh, a pre-charged pneumatic firearm, meaning we've got to put some air in it. And uh, uh, one way is to get a, a pump, a hand pump, not the one for your bicycle. I'm talking about a $150 special one for these guns. And uh, you might as well go ahead and cancel your physical gym membership because you're going to work up a sweat with this thing. Uh, since it works best from 2,000 pounds per square inch out to 3,000, that's where you're going to be using that hand pump. Every time it gets down to 2,000, which you can see right here on the gauge, you'll be pumping it maybe a hundred strokes, and every one of them's tough, to get it to the 3,000 mark so you can start shooting again. Uh, that might be uh, the, the biggest complaint with air guns in general. Of course, you could do what I did. I got a couple of Aqualung tanks. I bought a couple of used ones. They still had life in them. I had to get a special uh, regulator that brings the hose over to the gun. And I was out about $250. But I got two nice 80 cubic inch tanks for that price. And that's how I keep my air guns filled up. Uh, some people like to buy the small fiber optic one, fiber, uh, not optic, but the fiber, uh, carbon fiber tanks and take them out in the field with them. Um, but to take that over to a scuba place and uh, be charged to fill that up is, doesn't make sense. So your best deal is to buy one of these Chinese electric pumps and keep those filled. But in the end, you've got to get these up to 3,000 pounds per square inch and you'll, you'll enjoy your air guns. Uh, the length of this thing is 28 inches. Uh, I like that. The longer the barrel, 
the better shooter it's going to be. And on this particular rifle, the barrel starts here and ends about here. And all the rest of this is a moderator to keep the sound down. And that's how we keep them backyard friendly. Uh, I'm very concerned about the complaints that go into the police, then to the city hall, then to the county, and ultimately the state. We got states that, like Illinois, they won't let any air gun be shipped into them that's bigger than a 17 caliber. Now that's BB size. So getting it by mail is not going to happen in Illinois if you want something big, especially a big bore like this gun. Other states are putting all kinds of screwy laws and rules. You do need to check it. You can Google it and find out. And I'd like to turn that back, but I need your help. I need my own help. We've got to make our rifles backyard friendly. We need to keep them quiet. We need good moderators out on the end. We need to uh, hunt animals when we actually plan to eat them. And uh, my dad wouldn't let me shoot anything that I wouldn't eat. And uh, we can't be leaving them out in the roads and things like that and people just see you as, as, as somebody who's out there to kill. We can't have that attitude and that reputation. So uh, be careful how you use your gun day and night uh, so that we don't have regulations come in on us like there is now in powder guns. Um, the uh, guns have three sources of noise. One is that when your cheek is up next to the gun looking through this, the barrel, the, uh, the scope, you can hear a ping and that's when the hammer goes forward and hits a regulator in there that allows the, the uh, air to go down that barrel. And it's right in your ear and it'll, uh, you'll hear that every time, but your neighbor won't hear it. And the guy sitting five feet away from you probably won't hear it. So I'm not too worried about that one. Now, regular guns come into this second line, I'm talking about powder guns, and so do air guns, that when that bellet or bullet comes out of that barrel, the gas, whether it be air or whether it be burning powder, makes an explosion as it leaves. That's why we need moderators. And then you can help with the third source of noise. If you let your pellets and bullets get up over 1,050 feet a second, well, they're traveling now over the speed of sound. And that's where you get that as the uh, pellet or bullet continues through the forest or across a field or across a backyard. So getting uh, these guns up to these high levels is just a noisemaker. Trust me, you can kill anything under a thousand feet per second. Uh, I've done it. So uh, try to keep these guns from making a lot of noise. That'd be the first thing and then be careful you're following the rules where you actually hunt with these guns. They can get heavy, um, about seven or eight pounds on all these air guns. And you put a scope on it and bipods, you can get them up to 10 pounds. A lot of people don't like that. I remember in boot camp, I had to carry an M14. An M14 was heavier than the M16, but it weighed 10 pounds and we had to carry that on 20 mile marches. Uh, that was an all day march. For us, we're carrying it into the woods a half a mile, maybe a mile walk. So I don't get bothered by a 10 pound rifle. Um, one of the complaints is they're pricey. A lot of PCP rifles can be had for about 450 up to about seven. That's about where this gun starts and can go clear to 1300 if you want the camo version, if you want a case, if you want the scope with it and the bipods and all of those things. Uh, but it can sure be a lot of fun. I like a gun that has a positive feedback, and uh, this one does. I check several of our largest national distributors of air guns and learn that the Bullpup is actually number one in the year 2019 of your big bore guns. Well, that says a lot to me, and that gave me the confidence to go ahead and get this particular gun. Um, complaint is that uh, they call it a 357 Magnum. Uh, there are 357 Magnums that can get hung up in that barrel. Uh, Benjamin would have given everybody a favor if they had labeled it, I think, more properly. As you see all the bullets in my case, those are nine millimeters. 
Nine millimeter is a little smaller than a 357, a little smaller than a 38. And that's what this gun is really made for, nine millimeters. One more negative comment that people brought up about the Bulldog was that you need a, you need a serious backstop. Uh, I found those uh, 357s going right through my small frying pan. Uh, they, they went through the medium size one too. Um, so I got the, the big one and uh, well, it sure put a bunch of dents in, but it also put a pretty good hole over here. So this big one wasn't gonna last long. I don't think we'll be shooting this gun this winter in my basement range, but uh, uh, when you get a big bore gun, it's gonna be, it's not gonna be a frying pan gun. Um, I think that uh, one of the things that's very favorable, they're accurate right out of the box. It amazes me, but it's all part of a long barrel, a rifled barrel, and a good barrel. Killing, oh my goodness. You can see on YouTube some of the African videos where this thing will shoot uh, wildebeest, wild boar, deer, uh, coyotes. And um, I've shot a woodchuck at 115 yards. I saw one the other day where somebody shot a coyote at 200 yards. So they can, they can do a number. <laughs> they can give you all the power right out to your backyard, your back deck, uh, that a real rifle could. Um, other than that, I think it's a, a pretty doggone good rifle and I think you should use it. Um, I'm glad that Paulo had here helped me. He's been a buddy ever since I went to the circus. He was shot out of a cannon and he came clear across that circus tent and he landed right in my lap smoking and uh, he's been a buddy ever since he's not a good looking buddy but uh, he's a pretty good buddy i hope that you'll uh, subscribe to us i hope that you'll hit uh, our our videos because over the next few months we're going to be watching that and if we see good feedback from you if you think this uh, type of uh, presentation is a good one that ha actually helps you uh, then we'll continue we've got a lot of air guns to go through and uh, I think a lot of fun still to go so help us with the hits help us with the subscription and I'll see you next week